Hi everyone, we're going to talk about 11.3 other patterns of inheritance. So um, there are some exceptions to Mendel's principles. So we're going to talk about what are they and does the environment have a role in how genes determine traits. Vocabulary, we've got incomplete dominance, codominance, multiple allele, polygenic trait, and then taking notes, you should make an outline using the headings and um, bulleted notes below each to summarize its topic. All right, so let's go beyond dominant and recessive alleles. Um, let's see if I can move my picture. It's in the way, but that's just the way it is. All right, so there are exceptions to Mendel's principles. Um, genetics is complicated because the majority of genes have more than two alleles, so we've looked at Punnett squares and things using two alleles, but in real life there are more. Um, traits can also be controlled by more than one gene. So multiple alleles, multiple genes, so it goes way beyond uh, pure dominance and recessiveness. So let's get into some of those types. We have incomplete dominance. Um, incomplete dominance occurs when neither allele is dominant over the other, so they blend. Um, heterozygous individuals would show the intermediate form of both, so intermediate form being the in-between. So example here, um, these are four o'clock flowers. If you have a red and you cross it with a white, you actually get the intermediate form of red and white and if you blend or mix red and white you get pink um, so neither one is dominant and they blend together all right codominance occurs when both alleles are dominant and they have a full effect so they're both going to show um, both dominant alleles ap appear and the heterozygous individual but they are not blended so co, you could think of a co-worker or cooperating. Um, they're both doing things together. So here's an example, a heterozygous chicken um, is speckled, black and white. And then we have rowan cows, and most people don't know what rowan cows are. So here are some, uh, here's an example, uh, the white cow crossed with a red, one of these needs to be a bull, right? Um, and then they're going to have a rowan offspring. Um, same thing for the for the chickens. One of these is a hen, the other is a rooster. White and black crossed, and you get a speckled offspring. Okay, so those are co-dominant. Um, another example would be when there are multiple alleles. Um, so with uh, so far, examples with genes have had two alleles, like um, dominant and recessive, big T, little t. But many genes exist in several different forms and are ha said to have multiple alleles. So um, it's important to remember, though, that individuals only inherit two. They get one copy from mom and one copy from dad. So even though there are multiple alleles out there, um, there are actually four alleles that influence rabbit fur color, but each rabbit is only going to have two of them. You can't have more. Um, uh, you, if you would have to have extra chromosomes, it would mess things up. It just wouldn't work. All right. Another example is blood type. There are multiple alleles for blood type. So this is, um, blood groups in the United States. Most common is O positive and then A positive, and then we've got A and B and B and O negative over here. So there are four possible phenotypes. You could be A, um, B, AB, or O, and then we also have the positive and negative in there. But there are three alleles for the gene that determines blood type. So the alleles are a, B, or O. So remember, you just have two of the three in your genotype, one from mom and one from dad. And when we show that, it looks a little bit different um, 
the, here's the phenotype and here's the genotype and um you know this this just shows you could have a a or a and you have that that little i um, if you had two copies of the little i you would be considered an o phenotype for your blood type all right so we have multiple alleles we could have multiple genes so polygenic poly means many genic means genes so this is controlled by many different genes so traits controlled by two or more genes um, have a wide range of phenotypes so polygenic i think we're looking at three or more um, usually um, things like skin color hair color eye color but it's not just colorful things it could also be um, height have multiple genes influencing there's like six genes that influence our height so that's why we have a wide range of height all right but our environment also can affect our genes um, choices health you know food that we eat exercise that we do or don't do um, but also our genes they they overlap and so the genes provide a plan for development but how that plan unfolds also depends on the environment so here are a couple of examples um, pretty cool these uh, butterflies western white butterflies they have to reach a certain body temperature before they can fly and so butterflies that hatch in the spring have darker wing patterns than those that hatch in the summer um, and if you look at the temperature needed for flight it's 28 to 40 degrees celsius the average spring temperature is 26.5 degrees so it wouldn't be warm enough for them to fly um, unless they did had some kind of adaptation to help them out and so they actually have some um, pigment spots that can help them warm up same with this siamese cat um, they have darker fur to help their extremities stay warm and you know if you've ever been in the snow or outside when it's really cold your nose and your ears and your fingertips and your toes uh, those things get cold first and so our our extremities uh, sometimes need some help warming up oh darn let me present this all right so all right, I forgot I had some fancy stuff going on here. All right, so what type of inheritance is it? What do you think here? We've got the rabbit coat color. Uh, we've got all of these different options. Fully colored coat, light gray coat. Himalayan rabbit with dark ear tips, nose, paws, and tail. It's kind of like our Siamese cat. And then we could have an albino rabbit. So these are multiple alleles um here we've got the um the various blood types right also multiple alleles you could be a b oh there's b b or o all right what do we have here we have a blending so if we took a red carnation and a white carnation um we get a white carnation incomplete dominance right neither of them are dominating their blending all right we've got striped little kitty cats kind of like our speckled chicken that's co-dominance uh, we've got a speckled flower also co-dominance right so here the red and the white are both showing up they're co-dominant all right we've got this angelfish again we've got some silver and some black both showing up co-dominance height this is really cool they go from five feet to six foot five this is a really old picture um, but you could see that there is a variation in height um, this is a polygenic trait there are actually six genes that are thought to influence our height and actually um curly hair and straight hair if you had one parent with curly hair and one parent with straight hair 
you would have wavy hair. They blend, and that's an incomplete dominance. All right, so review. There are some exceptions to Mendel's principles that occur when you have incomplete dominance, codominance, multiple alleles, or polygenic traits. And the environment can have an effect on how genes determine traits. So DNA is not your destiny. Just because you have um, a predisposition, say, for um, heart disease, it doesn't mean that you're going to develop heart disease. But you obviously, if you know you have that predisposition, then you should do those things to make yourself as healthy as possible. And there are some things in the environment that can activate or turn on certain genes. Um, and even suppress genes. So there you go. Hope that made sense. And uh, yep, see you next time. Bye.